Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations coming at you with a uh, with a little discussion of a couple of popular antennas that are goofy. They work even though they're kind of goofy, or mo the way that most people construct them is a little bit goofy and I'd like to tell you why they're goofy. The dipole and the ZEP antenna. Let's start with the dipole antenna. In most cases radio hams feed dipole antennas with coaxial cable. Something like this here's the shield of your coax connected to one side of the dipole antenna the center conductor goes to the other side the shield uh, is generally grounded at the station and then this goes here to your transceiver or receiver or transmitter combination. For example, on 40 meters, a dipole antenna is about 33 feet long on either side. You always feed a dipole in the center, and a dipole antenna is always one half wavelength long from end to end. That's from here to here. A half of a wavelength taking velocity factor into account and I, I may talk about velocity factor in some other video but basically this is the scheme. On 40 meters it happens to be 33 feet. On 80 meters it'd be twice that or 66 feet on either side. Total length 66 feet on 40 meters then. Let's just say that you're on the 7 megahertz amateur radio band. What's goofy about this antenna? Well, this is a balanced antenna. Presumably, if you look at the current intensity, it's minimum at the ends, maximum at the center, and if you have it elevated up high and away from all kinds of obstructions, you will get a purely resistive impedance of approximately 73 ohms for this antenna. Okay, that's cool. The coaxial cable that you have is generally speaking about 50 ohms impedance, so you should expect with a perfect dipole antenna like this to get an SWR of about 1.4 to 1. 73 divided by 50. So that is all well and good, and that's the way most people operate these antennas. But the conundrum, the problem, comes right at this feed point. Coaxial cable is an unbalanced line. Unbalanced because it has a center conductor that goes to your hot wire in your transmitter, basically, and then a shield which goes to ground so only one of the antenna conductors really contributes to the signal that is the in the simplistic sense that is coaxial cable is an unbalanced or lopsided or asymmetrical type of feed system in fact that would probably be the best word to use not unbalanced but asymmetrical. Whereas the antenna, on the other hand, is a balanced or symmetrical system. Because it's identical on either side. This side and that side are identical, but you're feeding it with a lopsided line. So that feed point right here is goofy. Well, all right, that, so 
what's wrong with that? I mean, it works. And people do this all the time, and it works. What's wrong with it? Well, ideally, the way to feed a dipole antenna like this is not with coaxial cable, but with some kind of a balanced transmission line. A balanced antenna should ideally be fed with a balanced transmission line. And they do, in fact, make balanced transmission lines with impedances of about 75 ohms. They're kind of hard to find. You're not going to find them in an ordinary electronic store, but, but search for balanced line or balanced transmission line. Enter that as a phrase into Google and look for that. Then, of course, you would need some kind of a balanced to unbalanced transformer here, a ballon. And then the coaxial cable can go to your transmitter. Alternatively, you could use coaxial cable all the way to the antenna and put your ballon at the feed point. That'll give you a little bit better current distribution on this dipole antenna, and you should get, therefore, better performance, less problems with RF in the shack, and all of that. That's how to ungoofify a goofy dipole. Now, here's the other antenna that's goofy. It's goofy in the exact opposite way. It's called a ZEP. A ZEP, which actually stands for Zeppelin antenna. Because originally they designed these antennas to be dangled from Zeppelins, dirigibles, airships, like the Hindenburg. In any case, you feed this system with a balanced transmission line. You have a transmatch at this point here where your transmitter is, an antenna tuner, and then you connect one end of the uh, one side of the transmission line to a half wavelength radiating element. On the other side you just leave free. You don't connect that to anything. Now obviously this is an unbalanced antenna. So this is exactly the opposite of the dipole in, in its goofiness because you're using a balanced line to feed an unbalanced antenna. The SWR will be quite high on this, on this line. For example, if you, have a, if you have a half wavelength wire like this and it's well up into space, well away from any obstructions, you might see an impedance at this feed point here of 5,000 ohms. If you have a 500 ohm line, then you'll get 50 ohms at the feed point if you make that line one quarter of a wavelength long. And that's the way the Zeppelin antenna was actually designed. They had a quarter wavelength transmission line and a half wavelength antenna and then they just dangled it. They didn't connect it at a right angle like this. They just let it hang from the Zeppelin all in a line. And it worked quite well actually but it's still goofy at this feed point. Now finding a solution to this particular kind of a problem here is more difficult. You can't connect a ballon backwards and expect it to work very well in a situation like this, nor can you feed this system with coaxial cable because that high standing wave ratio would be just prohibitive. For example, if you had a 5,000 ohm antenna and a 50 ohm line, you're going to have a 100 to 1 standing wave ratio on a, on a section of coaxial cable that's just not going to do the job for you. So this antenna is goofy and stays goofy. But nevertheless, it works. 
I have discussed Zeppelin antennas in other videos and there's some very interesting ways to look at the Zeppelin antenna. One way is to look at it as an end fed wire like this, a voltage fed wire. They call that voltage feed. The reason they call that voltage feed is because the current here at this feed point is minimum so the voltage is maximum. The current out here at the end is minimum and the voltage is maximum. The current is maximum here in the middle and the voltage is minimum. They call a dipole for example a current fed antenna for that reason but this antenna here is an example of voltage feed. That's one way to look at it but there are other ways and uh, I may get into that in some future videos. You can look at it as a full wavelength antenna with one quarter of a wave folded over on itself. And you can also look at it as an antenna that's a high impedance antenna fed with a quarter wavelength of transmission line to serve as an impedance transformer or a quarter wave matching section. But right now I'd just like to say that this antenna is goofy and the dipole is goofy and they both are used extensively in all their goofy glory and they work. I guess Murphy is looking at that and scratching her head saying this is prescription made for me to foul up but it works anyway. <laughs> I got another Murphy's nemesis maybe. Stan Gibalisco signing off proprietor and operator of ham radio station W1GV saying 73 and so long.